From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. The insurance investigator that's working on the Byron Hayes killing. That's right. Who's this? I got a few things to say about the shooting. I can't say him to the police, but if you level with me, maybe I can say him to you. All right. But I've got to be sure of you, too. Who are you and how'd you find out about me? One of the papers mentioned that you'd come to New York. I guess you've read about me, too. I'm what they call the chief suspect, object of a widespread search. Roy Corona? That's right. Now, do you want to talk to me? Sure, Roy. Anytime you say. I thought so. I'm going to give the phone to a friend that's with me. He'll tell you where to go and what to do so he can pick you up. Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Corinthian All Risk Insurance Company. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Byron Hayes matter. Expense account item one, $12, transportation from Hartford to New York. There wasn't much to be done that first day. The police had their theory on who had killed Hayes, and I hadn't had time to form mine. And then that evening, I received a phone call from a man who called himself Roy Corona, the basis of the police theory. Twenty minutes later, according to instructions, I was standing on a 7th Avenue street corner holding a copy of Life magazine in front of my face so I'd be recognized. Hey, you. Yeah? What's your name? I'm your man, all right, Dollar. Come on. How are you, Dollar? All right. You didn't do anything I told you not to on the phone, did you? I told you I wouldn't do anything, didn't I? A lot of people make a lot of promises they don't keep. Maybe so. Well, I guess all I can do is either trust you or drive fast enough and far enough to shake a tail if I don't trust you. Or you can drop me if you don't want to go through with this. I didn't ask to come, you know. That's right. And I don't think you should have been asked. But it's Roy's neck, not mine. I'll just pretend there's a tail on me so I won't get out of practice. Store there. Thanks for the ride. It's on the ground floor, second door back. Tell Roy I'll sit out here for a minute and then park the car. Sure. Tell him I'll be in in a little while. Yeah, yeah. stay outside? Yeah, he said he was going to park the car. I'm not so sure I did the right thing calling you, but I guess they couldn't make things worse by doing it. I guess not, Roy. They want you real bad. Sure they do, because I'm a natural. Once you've been in prison, you're a natural for anything. There's more to it than that, isn't there? According to the papers, yeah, but not really. I didn't kill this Hayes guy. I didn't even know him. The police don't seem to think that's important. They figure that a guy who spends two years in a prison... Comes out to find his girl mixed up with a lot of men. It's going to get knocked off balance. Yeah, I guess that part of it's true. It did hit me pretty hard, but not hard enough to make me kill anybody. They think it did. Hayes was one of the men you lost your girl to. So they figure you wouldn't have to know him to kill him. That you were waiting outside her apartment when Hayes came out, you blasted him. Sure, they got it all worked out. The only thing wrong with it is that it ain't true. They don't care about that, but I do. If you can prove they're wrong, you got nothing to worry about, have you? My proof that I was someplace else is a couple of ex-convicts like myself. Statements from guys like that are broken down before they even make them. Isn't that right? Yeah, I guess there could be better alibis. Why did you bring me here, Roy? Try out your alibi on me or to tell me who killed Byron Hayes? I don't know who killed him. But it would help if you believed that the proof I was someplace else would stand up. If you have something else to back it up, let's assume that I do believe it. 
It's something the police won't find out. Rita was blackmailing Hayes. How do you know that? I heard him. Right after I came out, when I was having a bad time over Rita. I was in the hallway one night, and I saw him go into her apartment. I listened at the door, and I heard him talking about it. That would make it pretty careless, wouldn't it? Oh, it was him that was talking so I could hear. He told her he couldn't afford to pay her anymore, but it had to stop. It wouldn't do you any good to make this up, Roy. I know that. And if she was taking him, she must be taking the others. A cop wouldn't get the truth out of anybody, but you might be able to check it if they'll trust you. All right. I'll look into it. What about the police? Are you going to tell them? That I got it from you? Yeah. They'd either toss me into a cell or laugh me out of town if I did. Unless you'd like to stick around and pack me up. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. I gave it to you, and by the time my friend gets you back to your hotel, I'll be out of here and hold up someplace else. Sure, Roy. I thought you would. <laughs> The only reason this tip from the number one suspect meant anything to me was that to date, no progress at all had been made. Rita Cobb, outside whose door Hayes had been killed, said she'd known him only casually, that he'd just dropped in. Nobody else could be found who knew about the association, and even the widow, Agnes Hayes, said she had never heard of Rita Cobb. After I was dropped at the hotel, I decided to try out the new lead on the widow first. I've told the police everything I know, Mr. Dollar. I'm afraid it wasn't very much, Mrs. Hayes, and I wondered if there might not be something you didn't tell them because you didn't want to. What do you mean? I'm not a policeman. There are no reporters around. Everything you say to me will be kept in confidence. Mrs. Hayes, didn't you really know that your husband was seeing Rita Cobb? If I'd thought he was, do you think I wouldn't have done something about it? You didn't suspect anything? No. Even now, I don't think he was seeing her, as you put it. Do you know why he would have dropped in to see her, as she said he did? No. I knew nothing about it. Oh, please, Mr. Dollar, you must understand that this has been very difficult for me. Yes, of course it has. As far as I'm concerned, my, my husband always was a man above question. His friends, his business associates, everybody looked up to him. I looked up to him. And now you and the others asked me to believe that he knew this woman. She said as much. No, she was lying. There must be something else she's hiding. She's saying she knew Byron to hide something else. She didn't know him. She's lying. We'll learn the truth, Mrs. Hayes. Someone told me that Rita Cobb was blackmailing your husband. That's not true. That he was heard saying he couldn't pay her anymore. That's not true. Why should he pay her anything? He didn't know her. All right, Mrs. Hayes. I only wanted to tell you what somebody said. It's not true. All right, Mrs. Hayes. <laughs> I thought a little more of Roy Corona's lead after I got the widow's reaction. Nobody can deny so vehemently and not be doubted. I wondered how the beautiful blonde in the case would take the bait. Hello, Miss Cobb. Hello. I'd like to talk to you. Why? I told you and the police everything I know. That's what Mrs. Hayes told me just a little while ago. I think I'd better come in. Oh, no. You have no right to do this. I suppose not, but you have no right to hold back information from the police either. I haven't held anything back. I want to be sure of that. So far, the police and I have been working completely blind. Nobody has known anything. Hayes is shot to death right outside your apartment, and nobody has the faintest idea why. Do you think I'm enjoying it? Do you think I like seeing my face plastered all over the papers labeled the mystery woman? Don't you think I'd like to see this cleared up? Would you like to see it come out that Hayes was more than a casual acquaintance of yours? I met him once or twice, that's all. Why did you say that? How many other casual acquaintances do you have? I don't understand. What about a man named Arnold Smith? How did you find out about him? That's not the point. I refuse to have the names of my friends dragged into this. It wouldn't do any good. It wouldn't do anything but hurt them. Arnold Smith is about the same kind of man Hayes was. Married, past middle age, good-sized bank account. Don't drag him into this. Please. How about your friend Earl Fisher? Married, past middle age, good-sized bank account. What did you learn about him? I've learned about two or three more of you men. The police know? Not yet. You're going to tell them? I may have to. I wish you wouldn't. I didn't mention them because... I didn't think there was any reason to. 
None of them had anything to do with Byron. How did you know that? I... I think none of them knew about him. Because he was such a casual friend? No. I lied about that. But not to hide anything from the police. And why? I don't know. I, I was afraid to tell about him. I can see why. There are a lot of things that aren't being told about this. But it'll come out if everybody in town has to be dragged into it. Now think that over, Rita. In case you feel like coming clean. <laughs> She didn't feel like saying any more to me anyway. It was about 10 p.m. when I left her. And my first stop was a phone booth a half block away from her apartment building. I dialed a number and got what I'd expected, a busy signal. It was nothing definite, but I would have staked my expense account total on the hunch that she was warning somebody. To bear me out, the phone was ringing in my hotel room when I got there. Johnny Dollar. This is Earl Fisher, Mr. Dollar. Earl Fisher? Yes. You mentioned my name to Rita Cobb a short time ago. Yeah? I had a feeling I should have talked to someone before this. That's right, you should have. I hope you can understand, however, my feelings. I naturally didn't want my name to enter this public. Naturally. I have a great deal to consider. A family, reputation. Yes, yes, I understand, Mr. Fisher. But I feel that I have to talk to you. Did you tell Rita Cobb that you were going to? Hardly. Since she threatened me with dire consequences if I did. All right, Mr. Fisher. Where can we get together? I'd have to know that I could count on your confidence, at least temporarily. I think you can count on that. Could you meet me this evening? Where? Do you know Ricky's Club on Lexington near 80th? I can find it. Then shall I see you there in 30 minutes? The bartender will point me out to you. I'll be there, Mr. Fisher. Thanks for calling. That was the first real result of the lead given to me by Roy Corona. The second was quick to follow. I would have made another bet that a warning by Rita Cobb had decided somebody else to correct the situation in another way. It happened when I left the lobby and called for a cab. Hey! came from a car, double parked. First I saw the pistol come out of the window. Then I dropped, and from a prone position, I heard the rest. And I remember lying there. I didn't wonder so much about who was shooting at me then. I wondered how many people in the city of greater New York wanted to see me and my information out of the way. return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. For another great crime-hunting drama, spend a half hour with CBS's Gangbusters every Saturday evening. On Gangbusters, sheriffs, police chiefs, and district attorneys from American cities and towns tell the story of their manhunt. Fine cast of top actors join them to reenact these real dramas of crime-busting in action. Gangbusters is heard every Saturday evening on most of these same CBS stations. Be listening this Saturday, won't you? And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I didn't want to talk to the police right then, but I didn't have a chance not to. A patrolman was on the scene almost before I could get up off the sidewalk. Twenty-five minutes later, I was in my room with the sergeant of detectives I'd met earlier in the case. What's going on, Dollar? Who's out after you? I think I was mistaken for somebody else. Now, oh, you know better than that. I've got witnesses that for ten minutes a car was double parked in front of this hotel. In that time, four or five men came out of that lobby. But the minute you step out, they open fire. Now, that doesn't sound like a mistake, does it? It still could be. Are you holding out anything, Dollar? I don't know who shot at me, if that's what you mean. That's only part of what I mean. I don't want anybody killed working on one of my cases. Now, what have you dug up? If you don't give it to me, I'm going to put you under wraps for your own good. Okay, Mayor. Oh, then you do have something. Well, I didn't think much of it at first. It was a lead on Rita Cobb. What kind of a lead? 
on what might really have gone on between her and Hayes. And where did it come from? I took it to the widow first. She still denied knowing her husband was acquainted with the cob woman, but she may have realized that by admitting it, she'd be giving herself a motive. That's not new. No, but the possibility of blackmail is. And she could have known about that, too. Blackmail? Where'd that come from? I can't tell you, but I think it's worth something. I have a list of names. Men who might be on the same spot that Hayes was. Got it written down? Yeah, right here. Where'd you get this, Dollar? Names, addresses, and occupations. Sorry, I can't tell you that. You're going to refuse to answer police questions? Just that one. I'm not trying to hog your case, Sergeant Middleton. I'm trying to be hard to get along with. But you've got to understand. You must have given your word to an informer somewhere along the line. All right, we'll let it pass for now. Thanks. And I guess you understand, too, that you're probably holding the names of some potential suicides if you break this publicly right now. And what about a potential killer? Do these men know you're onto them? I'm not sure how many. I tossed a couple of names at Rita, generalized the rest. Then one of them phoned me. When I was leaving the hotel, I was on my way to meet him. He probably baited you out onto the sidewalk. It could be. I couldn't tell where he was phoning from. Maybe right downstairs. Which one was he? This one, Earl Fisher. Married, family. Fairly big gun on the stock exchange. Motive enough to make a try on you? No proof that he fired the shots, but I'd pick up Rita Cobb as a material witness or something. Somebody might think of putting her out of the way if they haven't already. No, not if they know you have their names. Well, I guess you're right. But I'll pick her up anyway. Let me get on the phone. Just try a check on Earl Fisher. <laughs> I called the bar where Fisher said he'd meet me. The answer I got didn't do much to alibi him for the attempt on my life. The bartender told me that Fisher not only hadn't been there that night, but that he, the bartender, had never heard of him. While Sergeant Middleton went out to pick up Rita Cobb, I hopped a cab, went back to the Hayes address to try the widow again. Is it absolutely necessary, Mr. Dollar? I'm so distraught. I'm afraid it is necessary, Mrs. Hayes. A number of things have happened since I left you. Very well. Well, I hope you won't stay long. I'll try not to. Would you like to sit down? Yes, I think we'd better. All right. Come in here. I hope you'll forgive the appearance of the apartment. I haven't had the servant in. Might have been better if you had, rather than staying here alone. I couldn't. I, I couldn't face her. I don't know how I'll be able to face anybody ever. We've been not what you'd call prominent people, but certainly quite acceptable. And then to have Byron killed in that sordid place under these circumstances. What circumstances, Mrs. Hayes? That girl. No one will ever really believe that Byron didn't know her, no matter what the truth is. I think you know what the truth is, but you've had reason to deny it. Now, what reason? What are you trying to save? Save? What is there to save now? I can't think of anything except what's left of your pride, Mrs. Hayes, if you'll excuse my saying so. You're a cruel young man. I don't like to be, but sometimes it's worse to be too kind. You've taken advantage of the police and me by holding back the truth for purely selfish reasons. Mr. Dollar. You're less interested in seeing your husband's death cleared up than you are in what your neighbors will think of you when the truth does come out. And it has come out. Mr. Dollar. And you're in danger of having to answer impeding the investigation of the death of your own husband. Now, what will your neighbors think of that? Mr. Dollar, what are you saying? What do you mean? Rita Cobb admitted to me that your husband was more than a casual friend. She's lying. Another acceptable husband admitted to me that she was blackmailing him. There are others. So it's only logical to assume that she was blackmailing your husband. That's not true. How do you know? It... Can't be true. The state will spend a year looking into Mr. Hayes' money transactions if they have to. And there's something else. I'm convinced that you knew about it. I was convinced by the way you reacted when I told you earlier tonight. <sighs> I'm so confused. When I told the police how you acted, their first thought was that possibly you'd killed your husband. Oh. Your motive would be that no. you knew about Rita Cobb, so naturally you wouldn't want to admit it. Oh. Don't say that. They can't, my own husband, no matter what he did. Police minds go that way when people don't cooperate with them. I was wrong. I thought it didn't make any difference. I thought nothing did but Byron's death. You knew about Miss Cobb, didn't you? Miss Cobb. Yes, I knew about Why her. Why didn't you tell us? 
don't know. And you knew about the blackmail? Yes. Oh, I know why I didn't tell you. I, I've been trying to spare myself, as you said, but for far worse reasons. I'm responsible for Byron's death. How, Mrs. Hayes? Because I was a righteous wife. It wasn't enough that I found out about her and her blackmail. But I wasn't big enough to forgive him or even think calmly. If I had been, it would have ended. Then there would have been no reason to consent to blackmail. You learned just recently, then. Yes. I made him go to this woman. I made him go and tell her that he was through and that he was going to report her to the police. That's why he was killed. I sent him. And I was afraid to admit my responsibility. He was killed the night before last. You must have learned that day. A man came here. He said Byron knew that woman. I didn't believe him. But when I faced Byron, then I knew. This man? Did he give you his name? No. What did he look like? Was he dark? Not quite as tall as I am? Yes. Oh, please go. I've told you. I've told you. Now I want you to go. I left and took with me one more piece of the puzzle that looked like it was ready to fall into place. The man I described to her was my original informant, Roy Corona. Serious, Dollar. You shouldn't have met with Roy Corona without telling us about it. I don't think your best squad car could have told the guy that drove me, Sergeant. After I met him, he moved someplace else, so it probably doesn't make any difference. Well, then what do you think his game is? The way I see it, he was in love with Rita Cobb. Two years in prison, he comes out and finds her involved with these men. He did enough listening at doors to satisfy himself that she was blackmailing hates as far as I can go. He's hoping to frame her for it or whether they're talking. Well, you shouldn't have met him when the door's coming up. Bring me down here for your witness, but it looks like you're. In... What's downstairs? Some fast explaining, Rita. And Hayes. I told you. For blackmailing, Hayes. I found that out. It wasn't blackmail. I borrowed some money from Byron once in a while. That isn't what Roy Corona told Mrs. Hayes. Oh. <laughs> I should have known. Well, I don't care what he told her. Go through just what happened the other night again. It's the same as before. Byron left. I heard some shots and ran out. Byron was lying there. You ran right out and didn't see anybody. That's right. You're sure you didn't see anybody? If I had, don't you think I'd say so? You didn't see Roy Corona? I wish I had. But I don't care what you've got on me. I'm not changing my story. I heard the shots, ran out, and Byron was lying there. Have you seen a lawyer? Is there a law against that? Are you sure you didn't run out first, then hear the shots, and then see him lying there? Are you asking me if I killed him? If you didn't, who did? I heard the shots, ran out, and he was lying there. We've figured out a motive for you now. Byron's wife got after him, made him come down and tell you he was going to turn you in. Didn't he say that? Turn me in? For what? Byron and I were good friends, and he dropped in. So you prove that's what he said. We've got pretty good proof that you were blackmailing five men at least. Oh, I don't think you'll find anybody who'll say that's what it was. Yeah. You had enough, Dollar? Well, I've had enough. I'm going to see her charged with murder tomorrow. You've certainly got enough. That's the way things stood that night, and until my hotel room phone rang in the morning. Ah. Uh, Johnny Dollar. Dollar, this is Roy Corona. Yeah, what do you want? I read in the morning paper they're charging Rita with murder. That's right. She didn't do it. I did. What are you talking about? What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. Only she didn't kill him, I did. 
shouldn't have, but when I found out she was seeing him and she wouldn't see me, I went crazy. I saw him come out of her apartment and I killed him. I want you to come and get me. Nobody has to come and get you, Roy. Nobody's interested in you. If you want to make a statement, look up Sergeant Middleton and make one. I can't do it that way. Look, I'm where you first met me. Bring the sergeant and come out after me. And do it fast before I change my mind. Hello? Hello? After working half the night, it bothered Sergeant Middleton even more than it did me. But it was something that we thought we should look into. About 45 minutes later, we were knocking on the door of the dingy room next to the poultry shop. Who's that? Dollar? That's right, Roy. Well, you came too late. I told you I might change my mind. Well, I have. Oh, come on, Roy. Don't be ridiculous. No, I, I killed him. And if there's no chance of working out a life with Rita, you might just... Look, well... Roy, everything is just... Okay, Dollar, let him have it. Corona made a good try, as well he might have, since he went to Mrs. Hayes and started the whole thing. But his shots went wild, and the sergeant's mind did too. When we dragged him out, he was still telling the same story. He didn't stop trying to save her until he heard about the confession made by Rita Cobb after I'd left her, about her motive and about the murder gun that turned up in her apartment. Find and closed his reaction to that. Uh, I'm sorry. I started it. I wanted to get her away from these men. I thought I could scare her away from the things she was doing. That's why I went to Hayes' wife. I never thought it'd lead to this. And I'd take the rap for Rita if I could. I wanted to get her to come back to me. Now look. Expense account item two, $140, miscellaneous expenses in New York. Item three, same as item one, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $180.80. Remarks? Earl Fisher, the man suspected of shooting at me, was brought in for questioning because there was no proof he survived that. But I felt sorry for him. I saw his wife, and what lay ahead for him at her hands was obvious. He was a condemned man. He was truly Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien's latest picture is a Paramount Pictures production, The Redhead and the Cowboy. Featured in tonight's cast were Jim Nusser, Lee Patrick, Gene Bates, Ed Begley, and Jack Moyle. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dick Cutting inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. It's faster, it's funnier, it's got new life and a brand new punch because Jan Murray has taken over. It's CBS's Saturday night musical quiz, Sing It Again, an hour of mirth, melody, and money that's heard on most of these same CBS stations. Yes, Jan Murray is your new host. Alan Dale, Judy Lynn, the Riddlers, and Ray Block are your music makers. And there are still loads and loads of cash for identifying the new phantom voice. Be sure to hear the new Sing It Again, starring Jan Murray, tonight on CBS. Stay tuned now for Von Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same stations. This is CBS, where you laugh at Jack Benny every Sunday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.